Today on Modern Table Gamer is part two of Star Wars The Card Game. This is a video where we dive into the game, and this is phases one through six of the core rules. In episode three, we're going to play an actual game between me and my son Logan. And if you missed episode one, go back and find it. You can find it on YouTube forward slash Modern Table Gamer. And that's the video where we cover game setup, we cover deck construction, what an LCG is, and the game's objective. card is a functioning card in the game and also works as a player aid reminding you of the phases of your turn. The dark side always takes the first turn of the game. The first step of the game for the dark side player is always to advance the Death Star dial and this is during the balance phase. They advance the Death, Death Star dial normally one click each turn even on the first turn. So they go first turn, zero to one. As the game progresses during this balance phase, you would look at this balance token. It starts light side up, so it has no effect on the dark side player. But later on in the game, I'll show you how this will flip during the force phase, which is the last phase. It'll flip, can flip over. And if the dark side was face up, then the dark side player would get to advance two clicks rather than just one to the Death Star dial. And again, his objective to win is to get to 12. And the faster you do that, the better your chances are that the light side player isn't going to take down three of your objectives. As the light side player, if the light side remains up for the beginning of their turn on their balance phase, then they get to do just what the card says. It says, take one damage, and apply it to any objective of the dark side, of their choosing. So they can take one and put it on either one of my objectives right now, if it was their turn. Now, for the light side player, if the dark side was face up, they would just skip that phase of the turn. Nothing would happen. The second phase of the game is called the refresh phase. The refresh phase is another short phase where it's just kind of a mechanical thing to reset your cards and get them active again, primarily. There's actually three parts to this step. Number one is you remove one focus token from each card that you have in play. And sometimes you'll have another card that has text that says you can remove more than one token during your refresh phase. You would have to have a card that gave you that power to be able to do that. The second part of this phase doesn't always happen. But if you had any of these blue shield tokens in play, then you would take and remove all of those from your cards at this time. And the third part of this step doesn't always happen either, and that is your opponent, let's say on their last turn, they took out one of your three objective cards, or more than one. The third part of your refresh is to replenish those. And then you resolve the card just like we did in the beginning. phase is a third phase of the game, and again, it's another very quick phase. What the draw phase allows you to do is get more cards from your deck into your hand so you have more potential to take down your opponent. You start the draw phase, you have the option to discard one of the cards in your hand. And normally you want to look at them and say, hmm, this card really doesn't fit my strategy right now, so I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to get rid of this card and then you get to draw up to your reserve value. And your reserve value for each faction starts at six, and you would look at the bottom of your affiliation card, and it shows at the bottom your reserve value. Then, 
you have some cards that potentially could add to your reserve value or subtract from your reserve value. You would look at the cards laid out in front of you, and in this case, I'm the Sith, and I have a card called Reconnaissance Mission. It's an objective that increases my reserve value by one. So now my reserve value is seven, and I can draw up to seven cards. As a side note, when and if you have more cards than your reserve value allows, all you would do is discard down to your reserve value. Let's say I started my turn with seven cards for some unknown reason, and my reserve value is six. I would just discard one, and I would not be able to draw. The fourth phase of your turn is called the deployment phase. And this phase starts to take a little longer. This is a phase where you can start to build your strategy. And this is a phase where the cards that are in your hand can come out and play. Now, the cards that can come out in this part of the game are called unit cards and enhancement cards. Up in the upper left hand corner, there's a cost. And in order to play your unit and enhancement cards and bring them out, you have to pay the cost in the upper left hand corner with the resources that you have in play. Now, resources are something we haven't talked about yet. If you look at your cards and on your objective cards and affiliation cards, all of those have resources available. That looks like a little like stack of cement blocks on the right hand side with a number on it. In this case, Shadows of Dathomir has two, Corporate Exploitation has one, and Reconnaissance Mission has one. My affiliation card also has one. The way you use resources and play a card is you take the focus tokens and you place them on your cards where you want to take the resources from. And in this case, I have a great card in my hand that my opponent will hate called Rancor. And I'm going to take my Rancor monster, and his cost is four, and I'm going to put two focus on Shadows of Dathomir, now I need two more. I place one on Sith, and I place one on Reconnaissance Mission. Now I can play my Rancor monster. The other thing that can prevent you from playing a card is you have to have what's called an affiliation match. And all that simply means is, if the card you're playing is like a Jedi, uh, Rebel Alliance, Imperial Navy, or Sith card, and it's got their little emblem, at least one of your resources has to come from a card that has that same symbol. So if I was playing a Sith card, I would put have to take one of my uh, focus tokens and put it on a card with that symbol, the affiliation symbol, or on my affiliation card for Sith. In this case with the Rancor monster, it's a neutral card, so it doesn't matter. Any four resources will let you play this card. So I'm going to stick my Rancor monster in my play area. Units typically go in the first row of your play area closest to your opponent, and then some enhancements will back them up behind or underneath those cards. Now, I can also play enhancement cards, but I don't have any at this point to play. And enhancement cards, you do the same way. They have to have, you have to have enough resources to play those, and then you have to read the text on enhancement cards and see if they apply. Some enhancements have to only go on creatures or vehicles or characters. Some enhancements cards would just go in your play area, and sometimes you can only play one per turn because it'll have that text on the card. You can play as many units and as many enhancements as you can afford to play each turn. As many as you have cards for, and as many as you have resources to play. When you use resources from a card, and let's say the card has more than one resource to take, you can only take resources from a card if it has no focus tokens already on it. So, for example, my Shadows over Dathomir. Let's say next turn in my refresh phase, I get to remove one focus token from that. But during my deployment phase, or if I wanted to play an event card, which we'll talk about in a minute, or if I wanted to use some uh, resources during combat, I would not be able to take them from Shadows over Dathomir. Even though it says there's two resources available, I can't take them again until 
it's fully clear of focus tone. This is the fifth phase of the game called Conflict. Again, follow along with your affiliation card and you'll see number five, Conflict. When I play Star Wars the card game, this is the meat and potatoes of the game. This is where all the action takes place for the most part. This is where, as the light side player, you're going to try to win the game by taking down three objectives. And you're going to try to damage the dark side's objectives each turn, and as the dark side player, I could attack my light side player foe and try to take down his objectives so I can advance the Death Star dial. The light side player only needs to take down three of my objectives and he wins. The dark side player needs to advance the Death Star dial to 12 and he would win. So this is the part of the turn where there's five stages to this turn. Now don't get overly confused with this. It's not that bad. It all makes sense. As the dark side player, I advanced a couple turns from when you last saw on the last deployment phase. And the dark side player cannot take a conflict phase the first turn of the game. This would be, let's say, my third turn of the game. And I am ready to take down. I'm going to be a little more aggressive and I'm going to try to take down this mobilize the squadron. And that's the objective for the light side. And so the first step of your attack is to declare your objective. You can attack in a turn, you can attack all three objectives separately. They're all separate attacks. So I'm going to attack Mobilize the Squadron, number one. Number two is I declare who I'm attacking with. And I say I'm going to attack with my Rancor Monster. And I'm going to attack with Night Sister. Then my defender has the option to declare who he's going to defend with. He has the opportunity not to defend with anyone, but in this case, he takes Han Solo and defends with Han Solo and then also this Twi'lek smuggler. So we're all in. Everyone's in this battle who is out in the play area. Now this part of the turn is very strategic and it's fun. It's called the edge battle and it's basically a, it's a strategic way in the game where you have to make decisions about what cards do I keep in my hand, what cards can I sacrifice to get this edge and hopefully win and damage that objective. battle takes place is starting with the attacking player. You would place one card face down. The defending player would then be able to take a card out of his hand and place it face down. And it continues to go back and forth until two players consecutively pass. Then all the cards are revealed. And now I'll explain what you're actually trying to do in this edge battle. The edge battle, you're not so worried about what's on the cards as far as what these little silver dots are on the left-hand side of your card. After the edge battle results, you resolve how or the winner would have the most of these little cir circles, and they're called force icons. 
The attacking player puts their card down first. Pass. Pass. Let's see what you got. Ooh, ouch. Got Admiral Akbar and a rookie pilot. You're throwing away Admiral Akbar. I guess you can't play him, can you? No affiliation match out there right now. But Devastator goes in the discard pile. And so the Admiral and Rookie Pilot, which four Force Icons compared to three, Logan wins the Edge Battle. There's another card that can be involved in that Edge Battle, and this is the only place it works in the game, and it's called a Fate card. And my light side player here has a Fate card, and I'm just going to simulate a quick Edge Battle here. Let's say I'm the dark side player, I look at my hand, and I say, hmm, I'm going to get rid of a card. And then my light side player would say, okay, I'm going to get rid of a card. And then I would say, eh, I feel pretty confident I'm going to win this. And I would pass. Then my dark or light side player opponent looks at his and he says, pass. So then we reveal the cards, which we only have one each out in front of us. I put out the Devastator. It has three force icons on it. I feel pretty good. I might win. My opponent plays a fate card called Twist of Fate. And in the upper right hand corner of a fate card, we have what's called like a, a number of initiative, how fast this card reacts in an edge battle. The lower the number, the, the faster it reacts. It would resolve first. It has resolve in ascending order from lowest to highest. So he plays Twist of Fate, which is a very uh, it's a card that I won't like at all as a dark side player. It cancels this edge battle and the card effects of all other fate cards just revealed. Discard both edge stacks and start a, a new edge battle. So he would discard that. I would lose my devastator. They go all the cards from the edge battle go into your discard pile. Can't use them unless you have a card that would let you take cards out of your discard pile. And then I would find another card maybe. I could start this all over again and start another edge battle. And in this case, I'm kind of disappointed and I'm just going to say pass. And my opponent, of course, he's going to pass because in an edge battle, when there's a tie, the tie always goes to the defender. And the defender gets the edge, meaning they would attack with one of their units in the conflict. They would attack first. So in this case, my opponent says, I'm going to attack with Han Solo. <clears throat> so he gets to strike with Han Solo, and the first thing he does is takes a focus token, places it on Han Solo, that focuses him to strike. When a player's focused, that card would no longer be able to act later in the turn. Now he looks at his damage or his combat icons on the card. There's three types of combat icons. There's unit damage, there's tactics, and then there's blast damage. Unit damage damages the units that are in the conflict. And he's got two of the unit damage on Han Solo. Now, that's his strength for that damage, and they, both of those unit damage would have to be applied to one of my characters or one of my units out here. And Han Solo is, says, I'm going to damage your Rancor and he takes two damage markers, places them on my Rancor. 
which then I have a damage value of 4 on Rancor. So now his damage value is only 2. 4 minus 2 equals 2. So Han Solo did that. Now he can resolve his tactics. And what tactics allows you to do is place a focus token on not only the cards potentially in play, but he could place it on any cards not involved in this conflict. Right now, all of them are that he could focus. So Han Solo focuses Rancor, which is going to make the Rancor monster, who is extremely powerful, it's going to make him ineligible to strike this in this conflict. Han Solo has a blast icon. Now, as a defender, blast icons do nothing. As an attacker, that would be the damage that actually gets applied to the objective card. That's what wins the game for you as a light side player when you're attacking objectives. As a dark side player, if you attack the objectives with blast damage, which is going to damage the objectives, that would advance the Death Star dial. One click for the first objective, two for the second, three for the third, four for the fourth. So Han Solo can't use that white background blast damage, even though he has the edge. It does nothing because he's the defender. So Han Solo is done with his strike. Now the strike goes to one of my units involved. I have Rancor, who is focused, so he can't strike, and then I have Night Sister. So I focus Night Sister to strike. And Night Sister has a unit damage and a blast damage. Night Sister is going to attack with unit damage, and she's going to apply that to the Twi'lek Smuggler. Damage value 1, apply 1 damage. Twi'lek Smuggler goes to the discard pile and is destroyed. Now, Night Sister has 1 blast, blast damage and then applies 1 damage to the objective, mobilize the squadrons. Then, after all of the units are focused, the combat ends. Those units would no longer be able to be used, but if I had more units that were not focused, I could say, all right, I'm going to attack another objective that you have out. So I could attack all three objectives one time only per turn. You can't attack an objective more than one time per turn. There's another possibility here. <clears throat> if I was able to have killed Han Solo off and took out his card, and then I applied my blast damage to mobilize the squadrons, it would have been a rewarded bonus with one more blast damage. That's reward unopposed. If all of your defenders are damaged and in the discard pile, you would get to apply one unopposed bonus damage to your, the objective that you're attacking. On a subsequent turn, the light side player deploys X-Wing and Red 2, and now it's the conflict phase. The light side player declares Shadows of Dathomir as the target and moves Red 2 in and also the X-Wing in. The dark side has both of his units focused, so cannot participate in this battle. If the attacking player is unopposed, they automatically get the edge. They get first strike and get to use the white back combat icons. The X-Wing focuses, can't use the unit damage because there's no participating units, but they can use the blast damage. And they get to apply one damage to Shadows of Dathomir, Gabush, and then Red 2 focuses, and then also can't use its unit damage because there's no one out, but uses the blast damage for Shadows of Dathomir, the bush. Now, since there's no defenders, we get to apply one more damage to Shadows of Dathomir as an unopposed bonus. The final phase of your turn is the force phase. This is another phase that actually goes by very quickly. As a player, you get to decide which one of the units that is in front of you, you want to commit to the force. You have these lonely cards sitting over here. If you're the dark side player, these three cards with Darth Vader. And if you're the light side player, 
they'd be the three cards with Luke Skywalker. Now, you take those cards, and this is something that's optional each turn. You don't have to commit anyone to the Force, or you could commit up to three units. Once your units are committed, you can't change that until that unit dies. Then that Force card would go back, and you could use it on a later turn. Um, or the end of the game. By committing a unit to the Force, and a unit could be a vehicle, a character, a creature, etc. As long as the card says unit on it, you can commit that to the Force. And what you're looking at are those Force icons on the side, and you want to have more units committed to the Force than your opponent. And the only characters that apply it are the players who are not focused. of a tie, let's say my opponent committed someone to the force, and now our force icons were tied, the balance would remain the same until your opponent actually defeats you and has more fo force icons out on his cards committed to the force than you do. Event cards, basically you're going to do what the text says. Some event cards you can play at any time during the game or when they apply during the game. video of my son Logan and I playing this game and you're gonna see some of this terminology like the event cards we just talked about and then another concept that's called put into play versus play we have a card called human replica droid and on this card it's a reaction so it takes place after something happens and it says reaction after you win an edge battle put this unit into play from your hand as a participating unit on your side when a card's text says put into play, so if I won the edge battle, I could take my human replica droid and play that card, and this is the big part, without paying the cost. It is extremely valuable. Normally this would cost me three resources to play, and if I won an edge battle, I can put it, take it from my hand, put it into play with no cost. Now. Don't get that confused with the term play, because play means you must play the cost. Like Admiral Akbar, he comes into play, you just have to pay his cost, and then he comes into the playing field. And just to recap, put into play means no cost. Play means pay the cost.
Thanks for watching, and I hope you feel ready to take on the battle of epic proportions, which is Star Wars. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can check out other videos from Modern Table Gamer and videos that we share at moderntablegamer.com. You can also follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. And remember, if you're not playing games at least once a week, the planets won't align and we'll never achieve world peace. Take care.